And we are live again today night. Welcome on into another Monday Live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. Not Matt. Today we're joined by Forbes. We're going to be talking about Glenn Gary uh, and what's the other one? Little Mill. Little and Mill. Little Mill today. Forbes is the brand ambassador uh, and he's going to be explaining all sorts of fun stuff with us as we drink through the line. Matt, who's already in the chat with us? All right, let's see what we got so far. We got Mike Franklin, Jerry Burns, Wesley Zeller, and we got Spencer Mavs so far. And of course, the thing has to catch up, but you know, it'll catch up when it catches up. We'll get back to it in a minute, whenever it catches fair up. Fair enough, well. fair enough. Because plus, we want to start drinking with some awesome gin here, which is not available in the United States yet, not but yet. will be later this year. So I'm excited. I think well, I know a lot of you guys are big gin fans that are also whiskey fans. So we're excited that Ford brought us this pre-market thing to the U.S. So I want to take it away and we'll talk about it. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's is Matt, what Matt mentioned my name is Forbes of Mullen. I'm with Lock Loman Group. Uh, we own uh, the, the Lock Loman Distillery and uh, Glen Scotia Distillery, and um, also owned the uh, the Little Mill Distillery before it uh, before it unfortunately burned down a few years back. We're going to be tasting through a few of those later on this evening, um, and talking about a little bit of that history of that um, as well, which is cer certainly very interesting. And um, we're going to be going through a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of gin here just to kind of kick things off i know this is uh whiskey we're gonna we're gonna cheat a little bit and just do a little little something off off uh <laughs> off the um presentation here with um with, with a little gin just because we are going to be bringing this into the u.s soon it's actually already in a few other markets around the world not in the u.s but uh it's called bin lomond and um Loch Lomond is um, is the, the is Loch is the Gaelic word for lake, and Loch Lomond is the largest lake in Scotland, where our Loch Lomond Distillery is uh, situated on the south bank. And Ben is actually the Gaelic word for uh, for mountain, so we're, we're, it's, it actually means Mount Lomond. And there's it's a beautiful mountain that uh, situated on the northern part of uh, Loch Lomond. So that's all all kind of uh, geographic here tonight. But um, we just wanted to kind of just show you what we got uh, coming in here in a few months in the US. As I mentioned, starting in a few wow. few uh, markets. Yeah, it's a beautiful bottle. Look at this beautiful blue bottle. Yep. I like the sexy shape of this. And I'll tell you, the weight of this thing is incredible. It's a really nice premium gin. Yeah, it's going to be probably retailing anywhere between, I don't know, 40, 45, 50 in the US. We're going to, you know, we're, like I said, when we figure out uh, you have to figure out where the yeah, I'll do it a little bit. I got a little bit already. I'll figure out where the where the dollar shakes out against the pound. It's been dropping. Dollar's been dropping against the pound recently. So we're hoping that uh, that stabilizes. But uh, just wanted to start off with just a little a little um, sneak preview of what's what's coming down the pipe with us at Black Loma Group with a with an unbelievable jet Scottish gin. Yeah, I'm gonna show those pictures real quick that uh, we loaded up for the gin, so we can show you a picture actually of the mountain because it's a really beautiful view there on the front of that uh, deck there in yeah. the PDF. So you well, just a second in very, I've never had prior to I haven't, I haven't either. I'm so. not, not, not familiar with some of these different different botanicals. I'm obviously juniper I'm familiar with, but we got coriander seeds. It comes with uh, angelica root, orange peel, Szechuan pepper, cassia. I think that's pronounced right correctly. Rose petals, licorice, orris root, black currants, and rowan berries. So these are all the different, different uh, Different key botanicals, eleven of them that make up the, this unbelievable profile with this. So, yeah, so Scottish your, gin. There's your rowan berries there yep. on the top of that picture. Just neither one of us knew what it was prior, so we <laughs> looked it up before the show. And there's like, look at that view. That yeah, view that, is that, awesome. that's that's Loch Lomond. I mean, it's just a, it's sort of like comparable to our, our Lake Tahoe. It's just a beautiful yeah. lake surrounded by mountains. The tallest being Ben Lomond, which the gin's named after. But great hiking. One of the best golf courses in Scotland mm -hmm. is there skiing I, you know there's just um it's called the trossix national park so it's a big tourist destination so we're lucky to have the distillery there in a very beautiful iconic part of uh, scotland so just wanted to do a little like i said a little, little preview of what's what's something interesting that's going to be coming here uh, a few months down the road with uh with lock loma group we got some great cocktail recipes we're, we're going to be making as well so just just uh excited to have something other than um you know, other than our, our wonderful scotch. Yeah, I know Spencer and uh, John are big fans of gin. For sure, I know Donald is as well. So you guys, I think this is a really, really nice gin. I think you guys really enjoy this. Make some, make some of those fun cocktails when it gets to market here soon enough. 
So say hi to our buddies, Multicasting. How's it going? Another great uh, YouTube channel out there. You gotta check those guys out as well. Yep. But yeah, this is a really nice, clean gin. Yeah, just beautiful juniper berries in there. Or if you're London dry, dry style gin, but just really nice and just really clean. I, I really like it. I think it's a really good gin. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, it's very juniper for, forward. Um, it's not as herbal as I enjoy my gins. I like I like something a little bit heavier, a little bit re richer and darker. Uh, but this is really bright and shiny, and mm -hmm. um, I can almost smell the heather. Yeah, when this is over, I'm probably going to bring out so that Cassius to make one of those cocktails when we're done later this evening, because that'll be fun. So, you know, it's, it's really good. All right. All right, Rich, we move on to, move on to whiskey. Move on to some scotch. So, you know, I, hopefully most of you guys were, were with us a few weeks ago when we had um, our, our master blender, Michael Henry, on, and we went through... Uh, well, we went through a bunch of different black women. Like nine, ten, 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 nine or ten. ten yeah, it was a lot. So we're, we're and then um, we're going to have we're going to be talking about Glen Scotia, our other distillery, probably in a, in a couple months once uh, once Michael's able to to, to to fit us back in. But tonight we wanted to talk about um, another couple of really great great brands that are that are also part of Black Loma Group. Uh, Glen Gary is. Um, also made at the Loch Lomond Distillery. So for those of you that may not remember everything we discussed about Loch Lomond Distillery, um, it's, a, it's a distillery Highlands region, dates back to 1814 originally, so over 200 years of history. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that really make it unique. So it's, it's the only distillery in Scotland that makes both blends and single malts under the same roof. So right now, I think there are seven grain distilleries, so only seven different places that made, make actually the blends, and about 125 roughly single malt distilleries. And it seems there's always some more that are coming up. I know they're building a few more on Isla right now, I've read about. So so very you know many more single malt distilleries, like I said, roughly 125 compared to the uh, seven or eight or seven grain distilleries. And, um, and the fact that we're the only one that makes both is why we have this brand Glengarry that uh, we're going to be talking about both a blend as well as a few single malts. So it's something uh, certainly certainly special with the distillery. We have two different types of pot stills that we use for for the single malts. We also if have. I'm going. If I'm going too fast or too slow, please tell me. Okay. Um, well, I'm just. I haven't even gotten to the looking at, 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 at that yet. So I was just talking a little bit about uh, a preview of it, but. Uh, yeah, you're fine. Um, and then we also have a, uh, a coffee still. Uh, uh, Loch Lomond and Nika are the only two distilleries that uh, that have a coffee still where we make our, our, our it's, we call it a single grain because we have to by default, but it's, a, it's actually a coffee malt because it's 100% malted barley that we use. But because it's continuous, um, it, it, uh, it, it prohibits it, excludes it from being called a, a, a single a single ball that obviously so and then we also have column stills for our uh, for our blend so you can see there if you look at the four different types of stills we use we have both a, a swan neck there on the left as well as what we call our loman still there which are more kind of like a hybrid almost between a pot still and a column still um it's got a, a elongated neck and it's got uh, 17 different layers of 17 levels layers of plates in it uh, we're able to produce at a higher abv um, because of that, so I'm going to talk about that uh, a little bit more. And then to the, the right of that is our coffee still, and then finally the far right are our column stills for the for the blend. So um, that's why we're able to do some uh, some pretty phenomenal things in, inside the distillery. We're also one of only four distilleries with an on-site cooperage. So um, you know that that gives us full control over our barrels and our aging process, and uh, you know really gives us um, an advantage by being able to have have uh, these, these on-site coopers that, that are there and they can uh, take these barrels that we get. The vast majority of them are coming over from the U.S., use bourbon, and um, they're able to, to recondition them, refurbish, dechar, rechar, everything that we need to do with these barrels. So I guess we'll start off with a little bit of uh, of the Glengarry blend here. So yeah, if you want to... I, will I purchased um, a couple of these already um, yeah, just to the use as... Um, you know my my blending scotch and i did not pick up that it was peated you know what i did not pick up that it was peated a, a little bit yeah certainly there's a little bit of a, of a little, little little bit in there you can certainly pick up but it's it's tough but you know what's interesting is that with only seven grain distilleries we actually 
you know, we actually produce a lot of uh, a lot of juice for you know, a lot of these well-known blends. So, you know, being given the fact there's only only seven of them that are they're producing the, the blend. So um, we're able to, I think, in my opinion, take keep some of the best uh, the best juice for ourselves and and put it towards this this Glengarry, which is just a really nice blended scotch. It's really the only thing that we're we're um, only blend that we we're doing in the U.S. now from from Loch Lomond Group. And um, the blends are traditionally about 80% of scotch and single malts are about 20% of the volume. Um, they're much closer as far as, um, you know, as far as revenue. I think actually maybe single malts surpassed uh, blends as far as total revenue a couple of years ago. But certainly, you know, the, the, the main, the majority of the volume is coming from the blends and you know, great brands like, like Dewards and Johnny Walker and so forth and Chivas. But uh, this, is, this is really um, starting to pick up here in the U.S., just started so, bringing it a little over a year ago, and it's um, it's already. I just, uh, it's already I just did the math on it because again, I'm finding peat, but we're talking about 15% malted barley. Yep. And only 10% of that is peated. So really, we're only talking about 1.5% of this entire thing is peated. You're right. Okay. So it's really just a minute, minute yes. amount. The real question is, can Sarah find it? That's what I want to know. I I do too now. Where where it's. Where's Sarah that? wasn't feeling it tonight, she's so not feeling she's well, just not she's to join this. not feeling good. Oh, okay. As I said, where can you find it, you're asking? Yeah, she usually finds all the peat. So I don't know if she can find the peat or not. Oh, okay. But she ended up liking, you know, several of the back on Michael's here of them as prior. So I'm wondering if she'll end up liking this one or not. I like it, especially for the price. I mean. Well, that's that's the thing. That's the mean, best thing about it. It's a, it's a great price. Yeah, I've purchased a couple of handles already when they yeah. didn't have teachers. <laughs> yeah. This was... It, this yeah, was, uh, you know, fourteen ninety nine. So it's coming in, you know, well below, you know, the the the, the competition. So yeah. uh, I think it was like twenty eight for the handle. Come on, yeah. done, done. And the thing is, it's it's very smooth. I mean, you know, a lot of people that uh, you know that that are used to they never tried a scotch. I think certainly the blend is probably a little little easier for some people. It's mixable. That's one of the, the great mm -hmm. things with this. You can you can mix it. It's just great on great on the rocks. However, it's great neat, but um, it, as I mentioned, it's just nice having uh, you know having a blend that we can that we can sell now in the U.S. from the Loch Lomond Distillery. Mm -hmm. I'll see. So I use it as a as a mixer in a different sense. I I uh, this is I use this as the base in you know my concoctions of mixing whiskeys together. Yeah. So. Hey, whiskey samurai. I mean, we got top shelf in here. Dustin's in here. Of course, our buddy Sam is in here. And if you guys haven't checked out those channels, please check those guys out as well. But yeah, I'm not thinking Top Shelf Dustin's going to enjoy this one very much. Well, maybe the Little Mills when we get to the other ones, he's going to like yeah, better. Yeah. He his favor expensive things. He will like what we do later for sure. Yes, but yeah, you can't really uh, for the for the price. I was really shocked. You know, it had, I tried it first. So it's good, man. It opened up after it's been open a couple of weeks. It's really good. It really opens up really nice. Um, I've never had one last a couple of weeks. <laughs> Or just do the wheel way, just drink the whole bottle. That also works. <laughs> but I think it's hard to, I, I think it's quite, especially for blends, especially for the price point, most blends in that price point, you're not going to want to drink, let alone drink them neat. This, you're actually going to enjoy neat and have it, you know, right. and drink, or for the price, you can mix it, whatever you want. And it was really nice with, you know, ginger ale or club soda or whatever, tonic water, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But yeah, it's a really great, or highballs. Yeah. Any of these things mm -hmm. good for those. So can't it's go an, wrong. It's an available, I think, in about twenty states so far, and, and, and growing. So, but all the all the it's in all the big markets now available. All the big states are carrying it. So it's, yeah, um, you can get it. And if you're local, you can get this a goody goody. You can get this a Mirage. Yeah, they both carry it for sure. It's just the specs carry through those. Specs, so. I think they're we're, we're think we're working on it. Yeah, we're working on okay. specs hopefully soon. I mean, in, in Florida, all the ABCs carry it. Okay. Yeah. So Trader Joe's in California. So oh, it's, nice. it's, it's, it's got definitely getting some, getting some, uh, some traction, which, which is, which is really great for. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys, so it's one of the ones I would say, if you even going to try to take a chance on it for, for the money, I mean, I think it's a really good one to take a chance on if you're not used to buying blends and you just turn your nose. I think it's a good one to start out and give it a whirl. Yeah, can't hurt. Worst, like I said, worst in the world. Turn into a mixture. I wouldn't have guessed it was eighty-five percent grain. No, me neither. I I was shocked that that was the end up being the percentage. Or it didn't. It didn't quite taste yeah. like a fifty-fifty. I would have. I probably said sixty percent grain, but I would have. I would have guessed at least 
That's what I would guess. Yeah. But, but again, your stills, it's all your stills is what causes it to be so much unique, at, especially for that price. And the, uh, so is it, you know, which is there, what's the ratio of the stills? Any idea? I know it's probably a ridiculous question to ask at this point. Well, I mean, I know that, I mean, it's, I think 15% of it's coming from the, from the, from the uh, pot stills. So 15% of it's single malt. I don't know what the actual breakdown is, but I know that we use both, both, uh, the swan neck and the Loman stills for it. And then, like I said, also the coffee still, um, which is, which is the all malted barley in there. And then, um, you know, and the coffee still as well. So all four or the column still, so all four stills, but I'm not exactly sure what the, what the ratio is between the two pot stills, but probably pretty close, probably even pretty evenly split. Okay. Is that better? Did this, I think the idea wasn't on. Apparently the uh, lodge check was on. Okay. We're better. Good. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So move on to the, yes, uh, let's move on to the regular. Yes. We're going to move on to the uh, single malt. Yeah. No age. Yeah. That's just start one Gary single malt. One Gary SM. Oh, okay. Which one's open? Um, that one's open. Okay. It's like pushing open on you. This one. This, this one's open. Dude. That's, that's twelve. Well, then yeah, mine's open. So. All right. There you no go. reason not. All right. Open another one. Okay. So this is our our Glengarry single mouth. There's no uh, no age statement on it, but it's anywhere from five to eight years old. This has um, really been exciting because you know again we're we're very aggressively priced with this. And coming in, you know, normally on the shelf around twenty nine ninety nine. So right around where a lot of these, you know, a lot of where some of these blends are, are still falling, where you'll see like a Johnny, you know, Johnny Red or a Doer's White or you know some of the Monkey Shoulder. Blends. Yep, Monkey Shoulder. So right around that twenty nine ninety nine point um, is where this lands. So it's it's pretty unique to have a, a really good single malt at that price point. So you know, we use both of the different pot stills for this. Um, and then when we talk about the 12, you know, that was done a little bit differently. So, I mean, that's, that's certainly always one of the questions I ask is how, you know, what's, what's the difference between our different single malts? Is, it, is, is this just a, you know, the, the, the younger of the 12 we're going to be tasting? I mean, not at all, which I'll talk about, you know, different stills, different barrels. So lots, lots of things, as I said, with, with what we're able to do with the distillery. Um, and you know, what, what's really unique is that between the two different pot stills, we're able to really have uh, control over the, over the taste. Um, and you know, even with, even with the, with the, um, with the, with the pots, with the, with the, uh, Loman still, there's like a cooling ring that we're able to either turn on and off. And even that is able to control the pla the flavor profiles a little bit as well. So I'm between like citrus for, you know, if it's off versus being, uh, versus being more peach and pear when it's on. So, you know, these are all sorts of things that really make the Loch Lomond distillery unique, uh, very unique, is that we're able to control a lot of the, a lot of the flavor through, through the actual distillation process. So, you know, as I mentioned, that's um, certainly something great about it. And this, this is, um, you know, really been um, exciting for us to have something this, at this, at this price point, um, you know, it's sort of comparable to like who, uh, you know, Glenlivet Founders Reserve has been doing very well. Um, that I think has been their top, their fastest growing. I think so. I think, believe it has been. So, um, you know, we're still going to, we're going to come in again, a little, a little bit lower on the, on the shelf than, than they are. And, um, and it's really something great because a lot of mixologists are using this to put in their cocktails because, you know, at, at $30 a bottle on the shelf, you can, um, you know, it's got a great, great uh, pour cost where, where in, mm -hmm. in the past, if you would have used a, a blend to make a, a rusty nail or an old fashioned, all of a sudden you can use a great single malt here. So this is something that's, uh, that's, that's great. It's the only thing actually that, um, that we chill filter of all of our single nice. malts. So, and it's the only thing that's 80 proof. Everything else is 92. That's chill filter? Yes. Yep. Okay. Never would have guessed that. Right. It's well, the only one that's chill filtered. Everything else is non chill filtered. So, all right. um, for those of you, I'm sure everyone's familiar with what chill filtration is, mm -hmm. but um, you know when you put uh, when you put put ice into a, a whiskey that has not been chill filtered, it you know when you, when you when you water it down, it gets below a certain um, ABV. It's going to release these fatty acids and proteins and esters, which will in turn cloud up the scotch. That tastes really, really good. Yep. yep. Right. Those are great, great ingredients. Absolutely, exactly. those are what make a scotch a scotch. So you don't want to. Most people do not want those filtered out. So, nope. so even though this is like I said, this is the only one that that is for us. But uh, 
Everything else is 92 proof. I'm and above. Yeah. shocked this yeah. is actually chill filter. It doesn't taste like it's chill filter. Most of you, you can generally tell. This one's a much more viscous yeah. to me. I was going to say the same thing. With the amount of oily viscousness that this yeah, has, it shocked. really doesn't present itself like most do. No, no not yeah. This is not your traditional 40%. Definitely not your traditional non-chill filter meat. But even alone, you know, because it's just really nice. I, I really like it. It's really nice and fruity as well. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Makes over the price one. It's also significantly better than uh, the Founders <laughs> Reserve. Like, it's not even the same class, personally. And I think that was the third bottle we ever reviewed. Um, this is way better. But this yeah, also has yeah. peat in it. That to, is to be able to get a, a single malt scotch under 30 bucks yeah. for, for like, like this is really fantastic. Yeah, it's the price point is fantastic. For that price, that actually falls into my everyday drinker category. Right. And, it, you know, right. when it comes into it's got a very nice yeah. carton here. So it's, um, you know, it certainly, it, it looks, uh, so it make, makes a great, great gift. It's just uh, great to have in the house, but um, mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, so Eric had a question. Yeah. So Eric wants to know, so is Loch Lomond expanding the, into other names and adding a brand? So I guess, yeah, explain why, why you guys have added this brand in general. Well, there's always been other brands that we've done at Loch Lomond in addition to just the Loch Lomond name. And, you know, we've, we've had, um, you know, we've had the Island Collection. So as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, with Loch being the Gaelic word for lake, Inch is the Gaelic word for island. And in the past, we've had what we call our Island Collection because there are actually islands. Loch Lomond is such a big lake that they're islands. And we've had in the past... Um, what we call our island collection, I mentioned. So we have Inch Murin, which in Gaelic means grassy island. We have mm -hmm. Inch Mullen, which means peaty island. And those have been a couple of the other brands that we've done. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's always been, um, you know, some other brands other than the ones with the Loch Lomond name done there. And as I, as I mentioned, we're, we're try it's a little bit confusing to have to have everything under the Loch Lomond name because we, we go up to a up to a 50 year old single right. malt that we have. And then to go all the way into a blend, so we're, we're we're not doing any any more blends under the Loch Lomond names. So we're doing under okay. under other names, and and Glen Gary, like as mentioned, being the the one uh, that's that's available now in the U.S. Okay, uh, Bourbon wants to know. He says he runs a liquor store. Who's the vendor and who can he order it from? First what of all, what state are you in? Then yeah, we can answer that question. Yeah. Hey Lee, how's it going? There's Scotch in the buy. You guys, Lee just started the channel. Actually, obviously she's got her awesome blog, but now she has a YouTube channel. Who guys want to check out Scotch and Vine? Please check out Lee. She's awesome with all sorts of great scotches that she talks about. Miss your face, Lee. So, well, yeah, I know she's a big fan of this distillery as well. So glad to have her in here. Yeah. So, oh, you know what? What is a Glengarry? Just people probably don't know what that is. Glengarry, it's a it's a hat that uh, that I guess the Scottish military used to used to wear. It's a traditional sort of. Uh, I don't know if you can really t zoom in there. Hey, look at the, look make at the it, hat yeah, there. A little, I'll see if I can get this. Down there a little bit. There you go. Yes. Zoom. Come on. Move your face a little bit towards yeah. the bottle. There we go. There go. So there. So that hat there, that's exactly what it actually is. Yeah. Is this hat. That's pretty. Because it's right. because the tartans and kilts were banned by the lovely British. Yes. So <laughs> they had to make a hat to uh, shove it to the British. As usual, that's always a good thing. Right. So it's a little. So they would fly their colors that way instead? Because Glen means a valley, so right. a lot of people use it. Uh, I think it's something like almost half of the Stiff Scotch facilities have a Glen, right? <laughs> in it. But uh, this is this is you know it's got another meaning. So it's Glen Gary is a is a traditional Scottish bonnet, I guess you yeah, yeah military exactly. military hat. But exactly. uh, yeah, most of my Google searches uh, ended up with a movie. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. I was like, oh, well, it wasn't aware of the movie. But I was looking for the hat to figure out what it was, and it finally was a hat. But yes, apparently there's some movie about it too. It's like so. I don't think it's anything to do with the hat. It was just some random American movie. Oh, bourbon ballers in Washington State. We're we're not we're working on getting into Washington State. Like I mentioned, we we just got into Glengarry uh, got into the Trader Joe's in California. So um, hopefully Washington will be will be one of the next states because that's I think that's the that's that's a really big Scotch market. I think that's that's certainly one we're we're looking to get into next. Absolutely. There's our buddy, I Whiskey She Wines. Hey, uh, Bobby and Sam, how's it going? Good to see you. I think this is one Sam would actually enjoy, Bobby. So should get her. You should get her some. All three of these. I think she'd like them. Yeah. Now right, move on to twelve. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. So now we're moving on to the twelve, as I mentioned. So this is, you know, now we're now we're into. Um, 
non-chill filter. We're, we're up and up in the proof here to uh, 92. So this is uh, this is really a, a phenomenal single malt, and um, you know it's gotten some uh, got a gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Um, for those of you familiar with the Jim Murray Whiskey Bible, it's got one of the top top ratings of any 12 year, and it's even got a very nice uh, comment from, from Mr. Murray. I think it says probably the most intense malt on the market today, astonishing and stunning. And I quote: "So this is uh, this is this is very." Very special. Um, this is going to be retailing, you know, usually around forty four ninety nine. So it's going to be, you know, comparable. Like it, you know, it's a Highlands, like McAllen, but coming in, <laughs> coming in significantly, really significantly lower. Than, yeah, than, yeah. Than, than McAllen. So you know, as I as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is this is done exclusively in our Loman still, and um, you know, with with the cooling ring and the on position, as I mentioned. That's something that that has really some some control and just going back when it's you know when it's on it's more peach and pear flavors going to come out and when it's off it's more citrus so you're going to definitely pick up some peach and pear notes mm. in this um, you know comes out at a much higher ABV and initially as I mentioned because our Loman still we're able to get it out in the in the ninety percentile ninety percentage range so much higher than our than our Swan Neck stills mm -hmm. and it just you know very very smooth light it's just a really really nice really nice single no, malt. that's a, it just gets better than a calendar every yeah. year that's that's what he means yeah it gets better it's definitely certainly better price on and better tasting it has a lot more to it and it's not none of their bs they pull oh and actually you can afford it and not get ripped off every time but hey and it tastes really good yeah so this actually reminds me the fruitiness that's actually like a really good um like an irish an older irish much fruits on this. Yeah, that's a lot of the tropical fruits I find on this. This is really, yeah, really good. It really is, especially for, for the money. Good luck finding them. This is this good for the money. I had to take a bacon break. I'm reset my <laughs> I understand. So, any other questions here? I'm trying to see if I can like, um, see how we go I'm going from here. Yeah, I don't understand how McCallum does it. Yeah, who knows? Who cares? All right, I can get Lucklow anywhere in Wisconsin, but Inchmo and Inchmere, and I can't. Is this due distribution or is it being different? Well, we are going to be uh, introducing um, Inchmere and an Inchmo and with a value added pack um, this summer. So we have our Lucklow and 12 coming out with our Inchmere and 12, and our with a, it's a it's a 750 of Lucklow and 12 coming out with a 50 ml of Inchmere and 12 and a 50 ml of Inchmo and 12 all all you know all line price so we are going to be sort of introducing the inch murins and the inch moans this summer and as you guys probably know having the uh the 700 now is a is a legal size in the u.s is really mm -hmm. gonna open up a lot of doors for us because mm -hmm. we have a ton of different SKUs, and we, we just can't bring them all into the u.s there's just so many and especially you know in the past where we had to we had to commit to a certain volume of 750s um, it just made it difficult. So, you know, we would we would have to just put a lot of things on hold. But now that we can do 700s and we can just order a pallet or two at a time if we need to, um, it's going to really enhance and, you know, and, and actually increase our availability of all of our SKUs here. So we are looking forward to having the Inchmere and, and the Inchmo and uh, later on this year in time for the holidays, I think, is the, is the plan right now. So, you know, doing doing a bunch of different things that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So that's one are of the there, good things with this. Are there any other places that require 750s like we do? I think to my knowledge, the only other country that does them is South Africa. So every, oh, every, okay. everywhere else does seven, 700s. Mm -hmm. So it, it's certainly, you know, we're definitely like the odd man out with the 750s. So, you know, not, not many. So now... Um, who, who knows if, you know, I, and there's still a lot of question what's, what's going to happen or is everybody going to eventually phase to, uh, to 700s here? Um, you know, I, I don't I just, see why they wouldn't. Yeah. I, 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 you know, there's a lot of question about that. And, you know, I, I think, you know, still, still too early to tell, I think, you know, with like the Ben Lohman, for example, you know, we're going to bring that in as a 700 cause it's never been brought in as anything else. So if it's a new skew, it makes yeah. sense to bring it in as a 700. Um, certainly, I know people. You know, will look at uh, will look at it negatively if um, if if all of a sudden, you know, seven hundred start coming in for the same price. But I think probably at some to some extent, um, it'll just offset what would be a normal price increase. It's only about I think a seven percent uh, difference. So, 
you know, I think some what you might see are 700 starting to phase in, but then there might not be a price increase for a while just to sort of offset the difference. But I think it's still still too early to tell. But I know that it's certainly going to help us um, as a company bring in new SKUs that we otherwise would not have brought in. This, I don't know if you have the answer to this or not. It's a good question. Is why did industry change the 700s anyway? Any idea? I, I think to, to just sort of try to make things a little bit easier. I mean, the, okay. you know, for, for the U.S. I okay. mean, it's, you know, we, we have to go through, it's, you know, alcohol, we're the most, uh, you know, reg, reg, regulated industry in the, in the country. Right. And it's just, you know, a lot of it, or there's so many different hurdles and so forth. So I think it was just one of one of the things that uh, the TTB wanted to make it, you know, help, um, you know, make, make things easier sure. for us over here. Now, have, have all their countries always just been 700s? They never had 750s in other countries? Or is that a change they made like a long time ago? I, I, for some, I don't for know. Some reason. I don't know if, it, if they've always done it. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, we're the only one that uses ounces and everyone else True. uses, uses you know, the metric system. Or just, uh, we've always been a little bit, uh, a little bit different. And so I'm glad that we're, we're kind of getting on board with the rest of the world with, with 700s because it'll certainly, like I said, it's gonna it's gonna really increase the the, the different um, the different amounts of, of SKUs we can bring in. So now you're gonna need a whole section just for you guys, right? I know, I know. <laughs> but we, we have we have so many, and you know, so this is gonna be really exciting for us. Any other so questions? You're gonna go for forty five or fifty? How much is it? price? Is what you're asking? Yeah. For. How much is this? Yeah, it's it's right usually right around forty five on the on the shelf average price. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think it, I think Goody might even have it on sale for like yeah forty three, forty two, forty three, something yeah. like that right now. So you get even cheaper at Goody. Interesting, but it's quite tasty. Yes, this is the first one that's had like a real nice deep richness to it. I thought the I thought the last one we had was oily and viscous. Absolutely not in comparison to this one. <laughs> hey, for twelve dollars more, right? And <laughs> the nose steps up. Yeah, yeah, it's really really good. Steps up in, I would say, you know, at least a twelve dollar step, probably closer to twenty or thirty. Apparently, in the seventies, almost everybody was seven fifty. Was it okay? Huh. I guess it's one of those things I have to look up from the whiskey history yeah. in general. All right, so, we have another so just the U.S. is just the last to apparently last to go. Yeah. Okay, so as a distiller, what kind of production volume do they have versus like other large distilleries? Any idea what your advice? Black Loman, we do. Our production is about thirty million gallons. I'm sorry, thirty million liters per year. So I think that's. Um, I think it's more than than like a McAllen because obviously it includes for us our blends. But I want to say I think it's maybe less than like a than like Johnny Walker. Okay. So, um, but but thirty million liters is what we do at, at uh, Loch Lomond, and in, in comparison, at Glen Scotia, which is our other distillery in Campbelltown, we only do half a million liters. Oh, so, it's you know, a so huge, difference. huge difference. So one sixtieth okay. of the volume at, at Glen oh, Scotia okay. versus versus at Loch Lomond. Yep, that's a big difference. Yep, mm, it's delicious though. Ah, oh, smells so good. So any yeah. other questions that we can answer here? Yeah, any other questions on this brand? Otherwise, we're going to move on to the surprise that Forrest brought with us. Since we didn't even know about till he got here. I did. I wanted to. I wanted to surprise you. I'm. I was. I'm very ecstatic about getting to try this one. So if you guys have not any questions, that we will move on to this very special. Let's present the box. Yes. Let them see what we've got here. All right. Look at this, guys. Best whiskey in the world. Let's go to 25. Yes. Yeah, so those of you familiar with the San Francisco World Spirits Competition for a for a company for a Scotch company, it, it is the it, it's the it's the coup de gras. It's the it's the definitely the most globally recognized and respected competition there is, and not just in the U.S. but but all over all over the world. Comes with a pretty picture and all. And there really were, cool. I think, this year there were thirty-eight hundred different whiskeys that were that were entered, and this got uh, won the award as best whiskey in the world just uh, a few weeks ago. So this is the Glen Scotia twenty-five. Um, there was there was certainly a lot more available a few weeks ago than there is now. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to find it. There wasn't a whole lot of, of volume to begin with, um, but uh, if you guys could get your hands on a bottle of this, it's it's worth it. 
Um, it's it's absolutely fantastic. So as I mentioned, Glen Scotia is our other our other distillery, uh, Campbelltown. It's one of only three distilleries left in the Campbelltown region. So there used to be, you know, somewhere between thirty and forty Campbelltown distilleries back at the uh, back at the back at the, during the peak. Um, back in the Victorian era, so roughly 1840 to 1900. And then you had some events like uh, World War I, Prohibition, yeah. the Great Depression, World War II, that, uh, that just killed demand for, um, for scotches. And uh, so at one point, there was only two distilleries still operating in Campbelltown. Now there's, now there's three, Springbank being the, being the big one, and, and they also produce uh, oh, Hazelburn yeah. and Longro there, and then Glen Scotia. And then at the Glen Gile Distillery, they make... Uh, Kill Karen, but how, what do you think of this? This is this this is just amazing. And uh, you know, Michael Henry, who's our blender master blender, who was on uh, with us a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We did Loch Lomond. Um, you know, not only is he the, the master blender at Loch Lomond and with with Glen Gary, but he's also master blender at, at Glen Scotia. So I think uh, I think it certainly lends some major credibility to uh, to his <laughs> to his level of expertise. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And, no, and our and our, and our master distiller. Um, Ian McAllister um, and the whole Glen Scotia team. Um, it's just, it's just what, what an achievement. We're yeah. just all so proud of, proud of these guys and the, whole, the yeah. whole team down there that just do an outstanding job with this. And as I said, you know, only half a million liters of production at this little, little distillery. Um, and uh, regardless of its, of its size, it's just producing some unbelievable, unbelievable scotch. So for those of you that can't get your hand on a 25, there's, there's a lot of 15 year out there that's really that's really phenomenal. There's some 18 year. Um, we have a, uh, a a double cast, which is oh eight. the palette on that is incredible. Yeah, I'm just gonna hang out with this for a little bit here and play in heaven at this point because this smells unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, we'll give you guys some taste notes here in a minute. I was gonna say hi to our buddy Larry. Matt, you gotta put it in your mouth, oh, man. Put it in your brew. mouth hole. I will. Put it in your mouth hole, Matt. It tastes so good. Yeah, I it's, have. It's, hi, it's, Larry. It's, Everybody it's, go see Larry's bar. Go yeah. to Union, Kentucky. One of the best best whiskey bars in America. So go check him out. You put the whiskey in your mouth hole. I'll talk to Larry. Oh my goodness, Incredible, that's isn't it? that is fantastic. That is yeah. rich and viscous and oily. So freaking oily. It is lingering. It is butterscotch and caramel. It is fruit for days. Oh wow. Well, the oiliness that you you talk about is, you know, obviously Campbelltown sits at the at the end of the Kintyre Peninsula, so it's surrounded by water, ocean. It's only about uh, a three wood actually from the ocean, so it's very mm. close. So when you're there at the distillery, you can s smell the ocean, you can you can you can uh, feel that sort of saltiness, and obviously that saltiness is picked up in the you know in the, in the, with the casks, and that's where um, you know that's really what makes the Campbelltown unique is that sort of that maritime sea spray. Oh, God. Uh, texture to it, that oiliness, but I mean, this this mm -hmm. is just uh, this is perfection. Oh, it's so it's such a nice salt and pepper finish yeah. on this. Yeah, this is just that whole you're sitting. Yeah, I guess you can sit at Camel Town. You're looking out at the, at the at the water, and it's just spraying up. Yeah, late afternoon, a little fog rolling in. Oh, this is beautiful. This is just spectacular whiskey. And again, I think you can buy four bottles of this for the price of one bottle of Macallan. And this is a better product. I guarantee you that also. So this this retails for about five hundred, oh. whereas these other twenty fives are, are yeah are out of the ballpark. It's a great yeah. price yeah. for a twenty five year old Scotch five hundred. Yeah. yeah. The answer is yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Dustin, you definitely need this in your life. Yes, yeah, Springbank did save Campbelltown. Thank God. Thank God we still have Glen Scotia because of them. And uh, yeah, now it's the best. This is this is forty eight point eight percent. This is spectacular. So yeah, if you guys can find one. Especially now that it won on this won this massive award, um, buy it yeah. now because it's not going to be there very long. Right. If you find one, you should just buy it. Absolutely. <sighs> I know we're going to be we're going to be completely out here soon, and then we got uh, some reinforcements coming in in time for the holidays. There's this really unique flower on the nose. I'm trying to think what flower this is. It's got this vegetal earth note too. Oh, it's 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 vegetal. It is Cameltown funky. It's almost got like a peppermint with a periwinkle crushed together. Okay. And that I'm earth getting like a I'm getting like a zucchini note. Yeah, zucchini. That's a like good grilled one. zucchini. Mm-hmm. Add a little bit of pineapple, almost like a pineapple from like a pineapple pizza. It's been through the pizza oven. Yeah. I mean, sure I you need to have a little yeah, more. Yeah, I'm thinking a little I'm, more. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm missing a couple. Clearly. Yes. 
a.m. So hey, Colin, how's it going? Hey, oh, Andrew wow. Page and Matthew McNabb. We'll say hi to you guys. Is, yeah. Do you know if this one's painted? No, it, I don't think it is. I, I'm not finding beautiful Campbelltown. There's no sherry in it. It's just a hundred percent American oak. Yeah. Wow. Nice. <sighs> now, Andrew Page, the Glen Scotia peated tenure is very good. Now that one's discontinued, right? It's it's or, it's, it's we're phasing it out. Phasing out. Yeah, yeah. So we have we have some we still have some inventory in the U.S. Um, it's still available. We're going to be switching that from peated to unpeated. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a peated one on the ground over there, so yes, we're good here. Yeah. So when he when he comes back when we do the uh, Glen Scotia night, we'll have you guys yes. covered. Yes. Fair enough. We'll, we'll be going through them all. <sighs> Probably in August, I'm guessing. We'll yeah, that works. Yeah. yeah, like Victorian of like this, I guess the standard line. Victorian is my absolute dire. For, I think I've, half that bottle has been given out at this point because it's so glorious. And yeah. People have to go buy bottles after it. So it's worked really well for the sales. <laughs> like, this is amazing. And same with Glen Scotia, just like, like along with the price of this is also extremely reasonable yeah. compared to most distilleries. So I mean, some of the some of the you know, I know some of the prices out there still haven't. Uh, we we were we held off as long as possible, taking the price up with the with the tariff. Oh right. right. Hoping that it would be short lived and it wouldn't be lasting as long. And obviously, it's been suspended now till Fourth of July. We're hoping it's made permanent. So that'll that'll be great because you know, on top of the tariff, the dollar has really been been struggling against the pound. Um, the last few months as well, just sort of exacerbating the, the, the situation on top of the, the tariff pain. So, um, yeah. So hopefully the, the, the tariff will be going away. I read today that uh, the EU was, is, they're going to, they're going to, they're suspending the hour, uh, quit canceling their tariffs on, on American whiskey, oh, which is good, that's so good for all of us. Though. Hopefully this tariff, this whiskey tariff war will come to an end here shortly. It has nothing to do with all these, you know, airline and air, mm -hmm. airbus subsidies and everything that's that's um, that's the, the cause of it. We're gonna that's have this special moments in the good. corner. I'm sorry, people, this is amazing whiskey. It's, it's stupid good. It is rich yeah. and viscous. Seriously, and fine, you should buy it tomorrow. Really. I would. Yeah. I would all you can. Yeah. But like I said, you know, there's, you know, there's, the, the, all there's, there's not a bad Glen Scotia. No, there's there. not. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, there's in no dogs fact, in the house. They're all fantastic. I've found lots of bourbon drinkers that like Glen Scotia a lot as well. Yep. You can use them to convert them to Scotch drinkers. Work quite well. I'm well, I can, I can, I'm not, I'm not surprised. When I last time I was there and I was poking around in the in the warehouse, I mean, it was all makers barrels and Jim Beam and Jack Daniels bottles that were yeah. barrels that we're, we're using. So there's certainly a lot of. A lot of, a lot so of bourbon that's, just in you know, general, do you find a lot of difference between the different bourbon? Does that make any difference really or not really since then they're so long in the cask? As far as like the difference between the different yeah. bourbons? I mean, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be, I'd be lying if I could tell, if I said I could tell the difference between, a, you know, one that's been aging and a Jim Beam barrel versus yeah, a, versus yeah. a maker's barrel. But I mean, I think certainly you can, you, you can, can tell, you can tell, yeah, you, you okay. can tell, you can tell it's, it's bourbon. Um, but, but then a lot of our Glen Scotias are finished in sherry, both in right. Roger Jimenez yeah. and, in, and in Oloroso. So this one is is not, but the you know the other ones all, all pretty much have some sort of sherry finish on them. We need to come visit and, and test this theory. I think it's important. Yes, well, I mean, the, the, you know, the Campbelltown Malts <laughs> Festival is. Uh, I, I think it's still it's still being it's not being postponed this year as well. But but mark your mark your calendars mm -hmm. moving forward for middle of May. Um, you know, moving move in the future, Campbelltown Malts Festival is just going to become, I think, a bigger and bigger uh, event, sort of like Oktoberfest for uh, for Scotch drinkers. Mm. So, Sounds awesome. So, so there's only three distilleries in Campbelltown right yeah, now. Only three distilleries. Oh. Yes, Matt, do you want to move to Campbelltown and open a distillery? Oh, right. it fourth. I know what this is now. It's it's those candy cigarettes. That's that's what I'm getting. Oh. It's that when we were kids, those 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 little white ones that had the fake smoke come out of them. Yeah. It's it's that that candy chalkiness. Oh, this is so good. Oh my gosh, this is just stupid good. Your question is, would how long bourbon was aged? Well, that, that's a good that's a good question too, Dustin. Good point. Yeah, that's a valid question. How, how what is it? How old is it? All those good things. We just know we fixed their we fixed their barrel with putting by putting beautiful scotch in it. That's that's what we did. It's fine. Well, uh, bourbon. I mean, you know, they, they that's going to be hard to beat. No, so and they, have, you know, that has to be at least somebody's got to use it. Yeah, right? so you're right. <laughs> we'll so say it, it depends how long, but I mean, some of them yeah. are just have just been three years. 
Yeah, right? that's a valid point. Yeah. yeah, they could just be young. And then they can't reuse them again. So that's right. why that's why they, they get sold to scotch companies. Darn. Yep. So sorry that that had to happen. We had, we had to take your used barrels. I'm so right. sorry. Yeah. Darn. Oh, man, gosh. This is just stupid good. I just, I don't know. It's so amazing. Oh. Unfortunately for us, the night only gets better. I know. Darn. It only <laughs> gets better from here. That's going to be a hard one to beat, sir. Uh, well, I'm not going to lie to you. Got a, you know, one of the couple more years older, a 27 year little mill that no longer exists. Right. That's all. Yeah. And, and can never be made again. Yeah. You know, because it would burn to the ground. Right? Burn down. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But it is still where it burns. It's a wee bit difficult to uh, to make it to make any more. Just to yes. distillate. Just a little bit hard. Just Most unfortunate. Easy. But from the one time I ever had a little more prior to this evening, it is amazing whiskey. Yeah. I must have a clean glass for that. Yeah. That's very, very important. This is. Wow. That is spectacular. So again, the Glen Scotia was kind of off off script tonight. Just, but uh, we wanted to, you know, with having, with having it just won this award, we just felt like we had to <laughs> had to sneak it in. Yeah, I'm and so I, yeah. so sorry you yes. had to do that. It's yeah. terrible, terrible thing we had to drink that. Um, Larry wants to know who owns the bar up there, Union Union Forty Two Bourbon and Brew. Is Republic National Distribute? Who's the yes. yes? Yeah, we're with we're with. Guns goes with RNDC pretty much all across the, the U.S. Okay, so yeah. and I, I can recommend Larry all yeah. of their stuff from Glen Scotia. Yeah, all of them would be yes for sure. Okay, oh, are we ready for this closed, burned to the ground distillery called Little Mill? Let's give a little history of Little Mill before we even pour it. Well, it, it, it's it's funny you should ask about the history because okay. you know there's always been a lot of debate. Do I have a slide about, for this what, one too? On what the first. You know the oldest Scotch distillery mm -hmm. was, and and uh, a few years ago they, you know, they, they there was a lot of research done, and Glen or uh, Little Mill was was officially recognized as the first licensed distillery dating back to about seventeen, I think seventeen seventy three was when wow. I think they think that at first, okay. you know, at least it, that was the um, it, at least it was it was operating then because there was a cornerstone that that said that there was a, a the uh, excise man the tax man oh, had a had a okay. house there with uh that, that was built in 1772. Okay. so they think wow. that uh that at the latest they would have started producing the, the whiskey of the year the following year but uh so so little mill is is uh officially the oldest licensed distillery in scotland so it's it's okay. pretty unbelievable pretty awesome. um you know that's a pretty pretty important piece of, of history so you bit. know and then the, the fact that um you know lock loman was initially made um, to sort of help with with overflow, so Little Mill is you know technically it's a Lowlands distillery, and mm -hmm. Loch Lomond is technically a Highlands distillery. So and they're they're very close geographically, so that uh, that 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 line goes through you know right right in between the two distilleries. So you know as I mentioned, Loch Lomond was initially created you know by the you know built by the Little Mill company to to uh, sort of help with some overflow, but then. Um, you know the distillery burned down in 2004, and luckily all the all the remaining inventory was over at uh, the Loch Lomond Distillery because it hadn't been functioning. I think I don't think since about 1997. Wow. So you know, none of the none of the uh, stock was 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 damaged, but uh, so we so we still have still have some limited releases that we do every couple of years. Um, this first one is the, is the Little Mill 27 that um, you know, came out a few years ago, but we're just starting to get this into the US. So okay. we, um, we're a little bit like a little bit behind sometimes with, with things here. So you can see here only 500 bottles wow. of this. So let's, uh, let's let's try a little bit of this. So yeah, actually I need that new, new, my new, new glass here. This, this is the one, that's the one. Yeah. Let's go. Sure. We have to grab the bottle. Yeah. rare for sure, 500 bottles, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Just show you. I know it's not obviously the pretty label. He's got the pretty bottle, but yeah, the the, the real yeah, we got the sample bottle here. Yeah, we just got the sample one. But yeah, just so you guys know, there it's what is here one. I'd have to I'd have to travel with an armed guard to get. The oh, you would the yeah with the twenty seven and the forty. And, yeah, you know, no, it'd be worth more than my car. So like, let's let's it. not do that. Right. We're gonna taste some mm. amazing history. Right. You want more than that? That's good. That's good. 
So no, uh, no that as far as rebuilding, there are no plans to rebuild. I think actually the, uh, the, the from what I hear, there's a, maybe an apartment complex or something that's, that's uh, in place of where the where the distillery used to oh, be. So ooh. no plans to to re restart it. All the you know we just call it our last few precious drops of this. And um, like I said, we're doing a few releases. Uh, we do a, a, a release every few oh, years. So as I said, this is the 27. Um, we did a 40 year old a couple years ago that we're going to be tasting as well. And we got a 45 that's going to be coming out later on this year into the U S so we got some, some great, uh, great stuff with this, with this unbelievably historically significant brand. So Dustin would like to know what the retail price in this if you can locate a bottle. Um, this is going to be about you know, roughly 3,500 a okay. bottle. So I think it retails around you know twenty five hundred pounds, and we're, okay. we try to keep it you know as, as you know in, somewhat in line with that. It's tough with with, with the tariffs and the and the falling dollar, but um, you know certainly we don't want to be priced where somebody could get online and you know and get it. But uh, it's it's um, it's right around thirty five hundred is where it's going to be falling, or at least that's what we're, we're roughly. Oh, wow! And again, I mean it's um. You know, a lot of people collect this because, you know, oldest distillery yeah. in Scotland, limited limited quantities, and you know, certainly it's going to do nothing except appreciate in value. So, you know, I don't know if you can see from that picture of the bot of the of the package. It comes in a beautiful wooden For wooden real. box, but in, you know, in addition to the regular seven fifty bottle, it comes with a fifty ml, which is what some people. That's the only thing that they actually only end up drinking is you know, and keeping the keeping the seven fifty there, the real bottle sealed. So you can see how it, oh, how it's packed there, and it's my you know it's, I think it's it's uh it's pretty oh. pretty spectacular. Wow, that is wow, that is some seriously special whiskey. Yeah, holy crap! Wow, oh my god, the fruits on this are on this the the mouthfeel. What's the what's the proof on this? 51.3. Yep. Very nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Holy crap, is that good? Oh. Mother. <laughs> good <laughs> Lord. Oh, my. Wow. Clearly. <laughs> this is just There's some crazy stuff we're drinking. Wow. Now. Yeah. Man, well, that's I mean, it's definitely the most special night we've had on this show. <laughs> that's for sure. In a while, man. Uh, Again, just so oh, rich and viscous. Gosh. Um, yes, this is amazing. Again, ridiculous amounts of oil are still lingering on my palate after the sip. So yeah, if you can, uh, you can find one and you can afford it or split. Hey, you know what I would suggest to be honest is uh, split with some friends. I think this would be a really good one with some really good friends, you know, shell out some money and get an amazing bottle for an amazing experience that, uh, this one's 27, 27 years old. Yep, 27. And there's nothing like it. This one does not taste like this at all anymore. I mean, this is just this is just nothing like it. it's made totally different. Incredible. Yeah, these guys were like digging into the tails and 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 like flooring it. Oh my gosh, this is this is so oily. Wow, the oil. Yeah, the oils in this are unbelievable. I'm trying to think of anything. Else. I don't know. This has got to be one of the most oily whiskeys. Not only just Scotch, just whiskey in general. Just the the coating this is almost like uh, pure butter. It's so yeah. it's beautiful. It's like like a, like I feel like an olive oil. That thickness I, level. I was going to say coconut oil. Yeah, yeah. It's that, yeah. It's that oil that just doesn't seem to want to go away. No. And and once it gets really there, way. you're going to taste it for a while. <sighs> and obviously, you know, quantities are very limited with this. It's not in every state, so you know, if, if people um, you know want to know where where to find it, um, they can email. Um, Info at littlemill-scotch.com, and then um, then hopefully they can be pointed in the right direction as to where to find it, because mm -hmm. it is it is hard it is it's hard tough to find. I mean, you know, just like this Glen Scotia twenty five. I mean, these are uh, very limited bottles, and um, you know they're, they're out there. You just got to know where to where to find them. Mm. My goodness, it really is. This is just, I don't know. it's one of those things you can't describe. It's its so good. You, you, this is one of those ones, seriously, you can sit in the corner for a couple of hours and just have a great time. Yeah. 
just nosing for our first hour at least and then try it. This is spectacular. Yep, only just 500 bottles globally. Geez. I think in the U.S. maybe we had this to me is like 90, 90 in the yeah, U.S. Yeah. Wow, ninety bottles for the whole whole country. Jeez, this is a decadent cake. Yeah, it really is. Just layer upon layer of different flavors stacked. Yeah, it's like French vanilla, like that fondant icing. Okay, got that yellow cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right below it, you got you got a layer of that. Um, Pineapple, um, pineapple and cherry, upside down cake, yeah. pineapple upside down cake kind of layer going on. Then like, like buttercream below rhubarb. that. You got like a strawberry rhubarb layer. Mm. You got like a cherry pie layer. This is like the best dessert whiskey ever. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, you said it's it's indescribable. I'm trying to actually describe it, and it's it's very difficult because it's it's it it's something that you don't perceive you don't come across very often your palate doesn't have to deal with this kind of information uh very often and, and i taste things every single freaking week right um <laughs> but i i just it's it you're, you're not wrong it's very hard to describe what is yeah, happening here was the still 90 90 90 yeah 1990 1990 yep Wow, it's just yeah. I'm a seven. There's not many times, and I think that we've had this. We've had a lot of exquisite whiskey. <laughs> yeah, this one pretty much takes a cake, and there's one that's better than this that's coming up, which is uh, terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I need to leave a little bit of this in my glass because I got to compare this. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to compare this. I got to get get a nice clean glass here. Yeah, de definitely want a clean glass for. And plus, the best part is I turned 40 in October. We're going to try a 40-year oh, wow. whiskey, so. That's right. Happy that's early right. birthday to me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it's actually older than you because it was December, yeah. I think, also uh, in, 20, uh, in 1990. Uh, I'll pull up the sheet here in a second. I'm going to get right. 40. Yeah. 40 year little mill. Let's see if I can get that to focus real quick. There we go. Focus. Come on, focus. I love it when it doesn't focus. Come on. Focus. Doesn't want to. There, there it is. is. 40, so 40 years. years 40 years. It's the oldest thing we've ever had in the show. We we once is tried, it? yeah, that we once had the 40 year Highland Park when they were here for a dinner, but that wasn't, we yeah. did not film that. No. We didn't film that. 46. Actually, we did film it. I have that footage still. Oh, you do? Oh, okay, cool. Well, this is certainly the oldest we've had in the show live. That's for sure. And from the oldest distillery. And the oldest distillery. <laughs> no question about that. No question about that. <laughs> Look at the color on that. Good grief. Yes. Yeah. And this is this is just bourbon cask. Good. Wow. If you're watching, they didn't give me much. I am saving you some, Sarah. <laughs> just, I don't know what happened to that. Yeah. <laughs> Must it? Yeah. Must have vaporized on the way over. Like, must have. Pretty close. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this is a good, a good. Must smell good it. Oh, yeah. An exquisite tasting. <sighs> Sarah's like, give me mine now. It won't be here later. <laughs> she's walking by. I figured I'd. She's walking by. I figured I'd, I'd give her a yeah, little yeah, yeah. test. Yeah, just. Yeah. How much peat is in this one? It was in that 27? Sorry? How much peat was in that 27 year? I don't, let me see how much. It's not a lot because she didn't make no, a face. Not much. I don't know if there's any. It's not a lot and it's not iodine peat. No. Highland? Is it Highland peat? No. It smells it. Yeah. I haven't tasted this one yet. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, there you go, Eric. We're going to get a top hat and put our suit on to drink this one. Like an old 1900s one. I don't know. I'll do, I'll do this. Yeah. I, think, I think all of what we have has at least a little bit of peat in it. Oh, wow. I don't know if that. I want to know if you can taste any peat in that one. I can't imagine. Yeah, I, like I, I, I don't think there's any in the, yeah, in the little mill. 
No? Okay. No. no. There's nothing in there. No, God, no. Ooh. That one you can smell it? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. She can, wow. she can like smell that. she can smell that 1.5 percent ppm on the other that's one. that's funny in that other one yeah oh and i get this uh like yeah, i mean you know low ones aren't known for, for yeah P. yeah the only low one i yeah. think of is that's is the new yeah. is the ilsa bay yeah all right so i mean like this grapefruit custard that's in the initial whiff here yep that's it that's it <sighs> nose yeah this one is a lot more citrus dominant yeah. Yes. What, what what Michael's notes on the nose are floral bursts of honeysuckle and elderflower, early summer hedge grow with delicate honey sweetness and elegant oak spice of cinnamon and nutmeg. I, I'm getting I'm getting sugar sugar topped grapefruit, uh, grilled guava, like grilled like papaya or mango. You yeah. said you said the grapefruit. Yep. It opens with mouth-watering fruits, crisp green apple, and fresh pineapple with grapefruit and lime citrus, then richer dried fruits of sultana and raisins before vanilla toffee gives sweetness to the mid-palate. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't even taste it. This is just the nose. Yeah, yeah the nose is, is amazing. This is, oh, my gosh. i sit, sit here and just think about just this for a bit. Heaven in a glass. Yeah, exactly. Eric says... He thinks I need to put that footage out. Uh, as soon as Matt launches me a Patreon, we're going to have a lot of uh, behind the scene things that I'll go. put out. But uh, it's not it's not channel worthy. But it's it's uh, it's it's definitely you know it's something we will we will put out at some point. Okay, now I'm getting those um, those Walker cookies. Oh yeah, the shortbreads. Mm-hmm. It's very buttery. This really nice granulated sugar. <sighs> with guava, almost like guava with like wrapped in a leaf. It's fresh dew glistening in the sun on it. <sighs> with lemon drops. Oof. Oh my gosh. I have to taste it. I guess we should taste it at this point. <laughs> Oh, oh! I feel sorry for whoever you guys have in your next show after after this. It's gonna be tough to tough tough yeah, to follow. With. I like the twenty seven better on the palate. The twenty seven to me it was richer and more viscous. It was more oily. It was more clingy. This has a really nice a lot of fruit, but it's ashiness not. to it. Even interesting. Almost interesting. like not peat, but like an ash. Almost like. A put out cigar. Cigar. Yeah. Yeah. It's been out for a little bit. It's on a day. Yeah, and just day. that little whiff of smoke that comes yeah. up after the fact. Hmm. And it's still going and going. And I'll give you a second sip in a little bit when it stops. It's gonna be a while. Uh the finish is still going, but it's not again, it's not as oily and, and, and rich and viscous to me as the 27 was. The 27 mm. was like this blush and this rush of flavors that just hung on to my tongue. Well, it's got to open up here. Bread. I mean, it has been sitting there waiting patiently for 40 years for, for you to years, drink yes. it. Mm. You do have to, I mean, I, you got to let it sit. It's, it's okay. going to have to open. Yeah. So, so. must be patient with beautiful whiskey. What's my price point on a 40 year? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I didn't hear the joke. Said so George Bush Senior was was president when this was distilled. Damn. <laughs> Put it into perspective. Yeah. What's the price point on the forty? Mm. Oh, it's about um, mm. anywhere between about about eighty five hundred and nine thousand. And how many bottles of this was on, were made? Only two fifty. Okay. Right, two hundred yeah. actually. Two is it two? I think two. I have a. Let's see. You shared this thing with me. I might as well share. Yeah, That's I think right. it's two. Two fifty. Two fifty were made. Yep. That's what I thought. Look at that box. Good God. That's beautiful. 
I know Costco has got uh, got this out west. Oh my gosh! Yeah, out in two hundred and fifty limited edition. Ooh. Yeah, in green right. bottles. Yeah, they well, leave it in your mouth for forty seconds. The flavor explosions that now happen at this point. Oh my gosh! I got to give a second a year, huh? You, you, yeah. you got to give it that second 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 sip. Now everything that you were talking about in the twenty seven comes out in spades. Holy crap! Whoa. Wow. Yeah, a lot of citrus fruit on this. Yeah. Mm. So same thing this comes with a 50, you know, 50 ml vial for people to oh nice to, to, to sample and leave the leave the actual bottle. Yeah. Hey Swami, how's it open for, for you know to a lot of people I said like you will you buy this to an yeah. investment. Yeah. Uh, seems, Hold on to it. Seems like yeah. a good seems like yeah. a good investment. Go ahead and check out Two Wheels Down, Swami's Great Motorcycle Channel. Check that out. Oh, my gosh. This whiskey's just – it's incredible. That's just freak. Yeah, that second sip, man. It just, yeah, that's when, the, that's when the guava and the mango, the mm -hmm. papaya, uh, all of those uh, rich fruits start coming – those tropical fruits start coming, yep. rushing to the forefront. Yeah, this is just that fruit bomb. Yeah. Yeah, that one's more like a dessert cakey. This is more just tons and tons of fruits. Yeah. All over the place, the whole gamut of fruits. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, this is that's beautiful. It's just wow. Yeah, well, it's the most expensive thing I've ever tasted. That's for sure. Yeah, me too. Oh, Sam, it's the. And 40 I appreciate the hell more. out of you sharing, sir. Oh my gosh! I appreciate you for sharing, Forbes. This Absolutely is beautiful, sir. It, 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 these are best to, best to share. Drink amongst friends. Absolutely. Sam, we just tasted a year. That was what we were just describing. Uh, we're, we're tasting the 27 and the 40. Of the you wouldn't like it. <laughs> you wouldn't like it, Sam. It's, 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 not, it's not for you. My gosh, you go back to that 27. Holy crap. It is seriously just cake. It's pure cake. It's so much cake. Yeah, we're, we're we're just slumming it, drinking just under ten thousand dollar whiskey. Exactly, <laughs> slumming it. That's right. Even for top shelf, this is over. The, this is whatever the hell's beyond top shelf. It's that. I think how much a dram would go for in a. In a, in a <laughs> if you bought the five, yeah, 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 about right. Yeah, hell, that's, so. that's actually probably pretty cheap to be honest. Yeah, using about a fifth, it's probably like two thousand, maybe eighteen hundred. Uh, I don't know, Kilco. My wife told me I had to save her some, and that's that's what I got left to save her. So I I, I don't know that I have enough to share, man. Mm. Yeah, there's not much to this. Yeah, we were we were very very. Uh, we're super lucky to even it. get this. So. Hey, Marty, how's it going? Forbes, thank you so much for yeah, absolutely for allowing us to taste this with you because this uh. is this is fantastic. The <laughs> mouth coat. It's a special time. It's special. I, Again, I going back to it. I like the twenty seven. I am I am doubling down on the twenty seven. That would be uh, hands down the one I would pick uh, if I was going to choose between mm -hmm. buying between the two. Um, I'd God be bless. excited that I could save some money and enjoy the whiskey more. That's good because you, you're going to have a really tough time finding any forty. It's all yeah. it's already all been valid points. It's already all been sold and uh, gone. I mean, it's out there in That's a few good. stores, but there's only I want to say twelve bottles for the whole whole U.S. of the forty. And you know, we and got about eighty, I think, of the of the twenty seven that's going to be available. So a lot more. I mean, still small, but but certainly more than the uh, the forty. Just uh, limited supplies of this yeah. unbelievable. Exactly, it's forty years old. Yeah, I mean, it's a, yep. there's not a lot of it sitting right, around. Right. No. No. Yeah. So like Dustin said, seventeen fifty now. So it's a good deal. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Hello, Libation Express. How's it going? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Well, any other questions on uh, anything we've, we've we've done tonight, or we've, we've actually done three three distilleries? Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty unbelievable. <laughs> Just some exquisite stuff. Yeah. They only gave me like double that amount. A test to me, guys. You only gave me like 
a little yeah. bit more than what's in there. Yeah, exactly. There's there okay. was like maybe a third of an ounce in there, guys. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> you can just get on a plane and go grab the forty. I'm pretty sure if you can afford the forty, you can afford the plane tickets. Pretty yeah. confident yeah. on this. And yeah. like you said, the tickets will be less than the, th the tax. <laughs> That's true. Like I said, I think some Costco's out out in California, Arizona have some of this right now. Someone goes, someone please take a picture because I really want to see a picture of it at Costco because that's oh, awesome. Wow. I think I, I might have one. You might have one. Okay. Been been always in the wild. I think Dustin and might need to take a trip out there and pick one up. I think I think that Dustin would enjoy that. Chat, if anybody has any questions for uh, for Forbes, let's go ahead and throw nice. those in. That's, he's got a picture of it. Hang on, put it on the screen. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's – here, focus. Nice. 9, there it goes. 9,000 at Costco. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. But yeah, somebody took that. It's in Arizona. Arizona, okay. Yeah. Arizona Costa. So now we know where one lives, unless yeah. they took it home with them. <laughs> <For that, laughs> they might. That, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think of most expensive ball I think I've ever seen in person. There was a ten thousand um, dollar pearl Louis tray that I saw once. That was crazy. I'd rather see this. Yeah, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Any other questions here? Not yeah. yet. Unless you want to know about any of these distilleries, we're happy to answer them. That's right. And we got Glenn Scotia. Like I said, we're gonna we'll, we'll get the get the date nailed down for that. Probably. Uh, Eric Eric is like August me. He likes September. to do blending. He wants to see a, a blend of uh, Loch Lomond and Glen Scotia. I'm not opposed to this plan. But I'm probably not going to do it with these ones. Yeah. No, 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 no. We'll do that with the cheaper versions. Sorry. Yes, yes. That I'm not doing. I, there, there's a line I'm drawing at blending. That's one of them. No, I think he means like as like a distilleries. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Blending yeah, these I, things. Sure that can, what's that? Uh, that's the way I took what he was. Well, saying. at that point, you're gonna you're gonna have a blended malt. Right. I'm okay with it. No, I'm, I'm sure it's great. All right, so we do have a question here from what? Glenn Shield? I don't know. Yeah, Glenn Shield is just it's another um, it's another blend name that I've I've seen. I don't I don't think it's available. I, I don't know what countries it's it's in. Oh, okay. I've just I've seen packaging for it. I think it's something we maybe do as a private label, but I haven't seen it. I've just just heard the name before. So like I said, like right now, Glen Glen Gary is the only blend that we're okay. that we're doing in the in the U.S. Yeah, he was talking about a distillery release. So like oh, wow. two different the two twelves mixed. Yep. Oh, that'd okay. be fun. I don't know how uh, how well it would sell yeah. or what yeah. kind of market it would appeal to. I mean, it would appeal to people like me, but you know, I'm right. not the biggest whiskey market for sure. <laughs> We can make that happen another night for sure. I'm willing to mix all three of our twelves. That yeah. I, that I'm that I can do. Well, heck, I guess four actually. Yeah. I have a mix of all the of all the Glen Scotias except the twenty five year because I, I finished that one. But yeah, don't mix that. I got I got a mix of the I got a mix of the other ones. Oh, okay. Well, that that is okay. Yep. Have I tried Louis Trey? No. If I, I have, have, I don't remember. What is I that have for a bottle. I don't even know. Is it thirty one hundred? Okay, well that's that's yeah. That's. Well, was, I would much rather have one of these. <laughs> Think about that. This is this is a good deal compared to that. Yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah, and way better. Yeah, yeah. And then again, we're coming out with a forty five, or the, called the called the Little Milk Testament later on this year that I think is going to be closer to eleven thousand. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. Only eleven. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Darn. So <laughs> that's awesome. Again, and then for the big for the big collectors out there, you can I think you can still buy your own private cask of Little Mill. Nice. Well, that's definitely a way to do it. Yeah. Now, 
I would say this: if you had the money to buy that, do you just age it for as long as you want? I, I, yeah, I think you, when you own yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. Man, you have to check that pretty often. I would think I'd be so afraid. Yeah, I mean, you gotta insure it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gloria Gaynor of a distillery what was that? I don't know. Oh, okay, I will survive. Okay. She's the one that's saying I will survive. Oh, oh, it's the name of the, the person who sang the song. Okay. So, yes, we'll definitely let everybody know when we schedule Glen Scotia night. Absolutely. Very much like, hey, Donald, how's yep. it going? Yeah. Donald, I know you love love this distillery. We just finished off the, the 27 and the 40 year little mill. They are glorious. You're going to want to rewind it just a little bit. You might want to as we go to our special place in the corner. <laughs> And we'll be yeah, back. I'm gonna need to go take off my pants here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if you on the cast, I'm pretty sure you can ball any size you want. I'll see why not. Yeah. I mean, hell, if you can get one of those countries that makes a four liter, I mean, I don't know why you want that, but hey, why not? It's, yeah. your, it's your cast. Exactly. Yeah. That I that'd mean, be interesting because that's that's the way I prefer my bottles. Is in seven is in one point seven fives. I don't see why yeah. not. I mean, if that's what would a cast that go for? Like several hundred thousand dollars, yes, I assume. Yes, Maybe yes. a million. I think we should ask Balconis. Several hundred several, several yeah. hundred thousand, yes, for sure. I think we should ask Balconis on our next trip there. If they want to donate several hundred thousand dollars to get a cask of Little Mill? No, if we can bottle their stuff in, in 1.75s. Oh, oh, okay. I'm My still God. on top shelf Dustin's question. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't see why you shouldn't be able to. I mean, I assume at that point you can make your own label. I mean, you're willing to pay for it. Bye, Sam. Psychedelic cow packaging? Uh, I, don't I don't remember that. that. What, was, what was the question? He, he, he said he's glad you guys got Glenn's coat. Oops. Sorry. Stop Glenn touching it. Oh yes, our our old packaging. That was one. Of, that was the first thing to go when uh, Lock Loma Group oh, bought bought both okay. distilleries a few years ago. That the, the old packaging was uh, interesting. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever. I guess I'll have to look up yeah. some old bottles. I guess yes. I've never yeah. seen the yes. old Glen Scotia's. It was pretty bad. It was. It was. It was. It wasn't good. Like seventies, like type yeah, yeah, flower yeah, power yeah. thing. Yes, interesting. So we've come we've come a long way with 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 our packaging since then and. You know, the entire distillery has been upgraded. The, the, the great visitor center that we have there mm. for, for people coming in. Just a great, great place to come visit. And especially uh, now, um, I know that uh, it's going to be, you know, the, the tours are going to be in much, much higher demand. I mean, you know, this this whole award is, is really put put the uh, put the little distillery on the map. For real, right? Yeah. That's in a big great. way. In a big yeah. way. So it's really exciting. So it's going to help, you know, it's going to be great for Campbelltown. It's going to be great, you know, it's yeah. going to be great for, the, for everything. It's just going to be, uh, it's exciting. Oh, one second. That's funny. I'm over here muted. Matt's trying to mute himself too. <laughs> it's okay. I can take over for a second while you take care of that. <laughs> this has been a very, very fun evening, Forbes. Um, again, thank you very, very much for sharing these wonderful whiskeys with us. Uh, the Glengarry, the, the original one, I, again, I, I've been, I've been very familiar with, I've purchased a couple of them. I use it as a base spirit in a, in a lot of what I do, uh, as far as my blending goes. So I've, I've enjoyed that one for a really long time, but getting to know the others in that line in the Glengarry line has been really nice because again, uh, I didn't realize that I could get a 12 year old for that kind of value. But again, the single malt for that value is yeah. Yeah. That's the step I'm on making next because I can get that for 28, 29. Come on. Yeah, it's great. That's in, that's in my everyday category. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's that's just a very, very well-priced single malt. And I'm really happy to have that on my radar. Uh, and then again, the other ones that you shared are just fantastic. So <laughs> yeah. Thank you very, very much for that. Covered the whole spectrum tonight. That's for sure. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I'm going to let Steph try this here in a little bit. So. A splash. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. So, I guess if anybody else has any questions, I guess we'll go. Because, you know, until we do uh, the Glen Scotia. Until we do Glen Scotia. Absolutely. Yeah. 
All right, so I guess next we, we've got the uh, introduction to finished and painted cast, which is really fun here with uh, Whiskey Mountain. She'll be on with us. And tomorrow we've got Octomori <laughs> 3 coming out, <laughs> the most heavily painted whiskey. And then we'll after that will be Screwball, which will be a totally different thing, but also the world's top selling flavored whiskey. So totally different categories, but both good things, different things. Obviously nothing as amazing as this because um, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, certainly. We really appreciate you sharing. It was absolutely, an absolutely yeah. exquisitely amazing evening, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys all next week. Cheers. We'll Thanks see you joining us, everybody. Cheers. See you soon for a Glen Scotia. All right. Cheers. Okay. Thanks. Mm.